Hey Power Rappers, this is Brian Knight from Pragmatic Works, and in today's video, we're going to focus on relationships. Now, not the kind of relationships you're thinking, but dataverse relationships and, and how it affects Power Apps. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome back. So in this video, we're going to focus on the different types of relationships in Power Apps. This will be a three-part video. This video in particular is focused on one-to-many relationships. In a future video, we'll do a self-join with a hierarchy. And then the video after that, we're going to focus on many-to-many -many relationships. All right, so let's begin here. So first of all, I have uh, a two-table, really simple example for capital projects, capital expense projects, which are those big, big projects that you have that require a lot of oversight. So when I'm looking at this table here, we've got, um, here we go, let me go over here again. Let me zoom in a little closer here. So first of all, we have our capital expense project. So let me go ahead and just draw a simple table there. And this is for this one right here. And then for the amendments down here, let me go ahead and draw this one. All right, oops. And I cannot spell amendments, guys. I apologize. It is my kryptonite, I'm afraid. So one capital expense project can have many amendments. You have a one-to-many relationship. It's also denoted like this way. So one capital expense has many amendments. And because of that, we want to make sure we model it that way. So in the solution that I'm building, I have not finished that one piece of the model. I've built an app. I've built two tables. But I'm missing the relationship between those. Now, it seems like an easy case. But there are a number of ways we can configure this relationship to how it handles things like deletes and removals of the parent records. In other words, the decision is, if I were to delete a capital expense over here in projects, how much, what should I do with these amendments? Should I orphan them? Should I remove them? Should I prohibit the delete? Or how should, I be, how should that behave? And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. All right, so let's go ahead and create the relationship next. So I'm going to go to the amendment table here. And I'm going to create a relationship between those two tables. And then we'll just paint the screen real quick with a few, with a few uh, app ideas. All right, so this will be, uh, I'm going to create a new column here for, um, uh, for this amendment. It'll be, uh, be called Capital Expense Project. All right, and this is going to be a lookup. This is going to create the relationship between the two tables. But we're not quite done there. A lot of you guys probably seen this piece of it, but not the final piece. So let me go over here and go to uh, capital expense. So if I can find the alphabet here, there we go. I'll hit done, and and when I hit save here, the relationship is now is now created. However, this is a one-to-many relationship. The behavior of this is a little bit different than what you might anticipate. So my last step I want to do here is I'm going to go ahead and create a a form and a view. I've already got the app built. I'm just going to go ahead and add these really quickly to the form and view. So I have other videos on what I'm doing here, but just go ahead and just, just uh, trust me. This is pretty easy, right? Uh, I'll save and publish this. And I'll do the same thing for the view. Now, there's a number of ways that Power Apps model-driven apps are going to behave, and Canvas apps also, are going to behave as soon as I do this. It gives us a lot of access to where in a Canvas app in Power FX language, I can essentially say, hey, show me the projects over here. Show me the capital expense dot, sorry, the, uh, the amendment dot project. And it navigates that and gives me the project name uh, by just saying uh, amendment dot project dot name, for example. I, I know it's not the right column names, but that's roughly what would happen. So PowerFX has that option, and the app is going to have some really neat options also. Let me go ahead and add to my active amendments, just add that column so we can kind of see what's going on here. Again, this will take just a few seconds. Boom. And I'll hit save and then publish. Okay. So now we're going to create a record so we can kind of show exactly the flaws and the pros and the cons of this. All right. So I've got the app already made. I'm going to go ahead and refresh this. We'll see our new column now in here. Okay, and I'm going to go into my uh, my capital project. I'm going to add a new capital project, and we'll just call this uh, new building, something like that. And I, I haven't put my amount or any of those kind of. I built a really core, really um, bone app here. So one of the neat things you can do with these relationships is now that I have that done, I can be in the capital project, hit related, and I can see all the amendments for this capital project. 
where I can then hit new amendment and you'll notice it actually puts a new building already here and I'll just say uh, roofing false or something like that. All right. And when I hit save and close, you'll now see a relationship between these. See roofing faults. And when I go into roofing faults, you'll see there's a, it actually is part of new building. So what would happen if I delete new building? What might happen is not what you think might happen, probably. So let me go ahead and kill this now. Oop, not edit. Let's delete this. Okay, there we go. So it let us delete the record even though there's a child amendment. So when I go here, look what happened here. It actually removed the, the relationship and left the amendment alone. So how do we fix that? How do we, uh, what are some options we have here? Let me go ahead and add another one here and I'll call this um, uh, new building A. There we go. And I'll create one called new building B just we have a few records here. All right, then I'm gonna create that relationship between these two just so we have new building A, there we go. Okay, so what happened if I were to, what would I want to happen? Well, I definitely, but frankly, I definitely would not want it to leave an orphaned record. So there's some options that we have out here, and that's probably the safest thing for Microsoft to do is to leave the orphaned record out there. So what we're gonna do now is go look at the actual relationship information. So we go back to my solution, go over to the amendment table, which I'm in now, and I'll go to relationships. This tab, you may not have been to a whole lot other than to say, oh yeah, that looks nice. But you'll see a relationship here between capital expenses here, and uh, and this amendment table. Now, if I hit this option here, we'll see right now we have a, uh, a many to one. One capital expense can have many, many amendments, just the inverse of that in this case. We can also go over here to, we can see there's a name that, we, that, that people will see, but when I go over to uh, general here, we can actually add some more metadata, but the important part is advanced options. Right now, as I kind of get rid of my face so you guys can see this, there we go. Right now, we can see that it's a referential integrity and the behavior is to basically remove the link right now. So if I wanna select that, I can also restrict them from deleting that record. Let's try this and see what happens, okay? Now this is the way you might expect it to work like in a database platform like SQL Server. In SQL Server, you can't delete the parent when there's children records. Uh, now there's ways around that, of course, but we'll see how we can get, uh, there's actually a number of options we can do inside of here. So if I go back over here again, go to my app, I'm gonna do a hard refresh. Now I have that one amendment right here. I think this this, this, this roofing faults goes to uh, amendment A. And when I delete this, watch what happens now. Okay, so it led me, oh, what if that actually, did I do a hard delete? Okay. Oh! <laughs> I deleted the project, and I, I, I deleted the amendment, not the project. All right, let's try this again. Let me go ahead over capital expense. All right, and let's let's go ahead and do related capital expense amendment. Excuse me, and let me add a new amendment, and I'll just put you know sample amendment. All right, I recognize I misspelled that. There we go, and I'll say save and close. Now, what would happen if I delete this overall record? So when I hit delete now, we would expect it now to behave more like SQL Server does. And I cannot delete the record until I delete the children records also. And we get a nice uh, fancy error here, which might scare your users. Now, the next option we can do is we can cascade that delete all the way down. So let's go back in that relationship again. I'm gonna change this to a, to a parental data type now. And when I do this, watch what happens now. I'm gonna hit done. And let me get rid of my face here so you can see the whole, whole, the whole screen here. There we go. And save that. Give that a few seconds here. Okay. Now that we've got that done, that should hopefully be done. There we go. I'm going to go in here and refresh this, a hard refresh. And what would happen now? In this case, what parental relationship is going to give us the ability to do is cascade that delete all the way down. So let's try that next. So in this case, I'm gonna go in and delete my building A. Uh, um, there we go, hit delete building A. Now it let me delete. And when I go to capital the amendments now, you'll see also all the amendments are also deleted as well. 
So lots of neat stuff we can do inside of here. There are some other custom ones you can do as well, but you won't really touch those a whole lot. You'll see if I go to custom here, you can actually specify how you want the cascades to happen here. So for example, if, uh, there we go. So if I change the owner of a record, it can cascade that owner uh, down to all the children records also. So it has that ability to, to cascade very selective uh, pieces of this. Like maybe it only deletes the active records and not the deactivated records. So you have a whole bunch of options here you can do. The assign is if I change the owner, of course delete you're already used to. If I share a record, does it delete with the share also the children records? Uh, if I change the parent, is it gonna change all the children parents also? Uh, it's a really, really robust options that you have inside of here. Just to make sure I show that to you, you'll see custom and you have all those options right inside of here as well. So custom gives you really fine tooth controls, but the ones you're gonna mainly use are gonna be referential and you'll say uh, restrict it, or you might say, I wanna do a parental and cascade those down. A few other notes, just keep in mind, when you first create that relationship, it is going to allow you to delete the parent and when you delete the parent, it will not delete the children records. So just a, a word of warning there, if that's not the behavior you want, you may wanna consider going back to your Dataverse and making those changes. All right, hope you enjoyed this video. Our next video is on how do we turn on a hierarchy? In other words, how can my parent uh, project have children projects? And I wanna see that from a GUI perspective as well. All right, thanks for watching this video. If this found us useful, please do give us a thumbs up if you found it useful. Uh, and we also, as part of our training we do on Dataverse and also on model-driven apps and in Power Apps in general. Have a great day, and thanks for watching me today. Goodbye.